So we have the latest Fox Alien machine in the workshop, the XE Pro. But obviously the first thing we need to go through is how to build this and make sure it is set up correctly. And that's exactly what we're doing in today's episode. Hey everyone and welcome to the latest episode. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button in the corner to get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials and reviews. Now in today's episode, we are going to be walking through the build of the Fox Alien XE Pro, their latest machine to the market. Now the one thing I will flag straight away is there is an upgrade kit available for this machine, converting it to use linear rails. I do have this upgrade kit and I will be showing you how to do that upgrade in a future episode, but for this one, we're just going to go through the standard build as it comes. So let's dive in and start to build the XC Pro. So the first thing you'll want to do is get everything out of the box and check it against the package list. Even down to every nut and bolt, make sure they are there before you begin. Next, you want to take the five parts of your base frame, the silver aluminium, and lay them out in this order. The two widest pieces on the far outside, the medium pieces in between them, and then the shortest piece joining those. In terms of the holes on the side that we'll be connecting with, it is the two inner holes on both sides that we'll be joining the extrusion to. Now, we need the M5 30 millimeter bolts, and we need to preload these with a spring washer and a flat washer. Spring washer goes on first, then the flat washer and we're going to go around and get all 12 bolts in to build the sub subframe. So as you're putting all of these bolts in place just get them in finger tight first before you go around and tighten everything up. If you tighten them up too much first it may pull things out of square so as I say do them loosely to begin with and then pinch them up once all 12 bolts are in. So with all the bolts tightened up on the base frame, turn it to this orientation with the longest part of the front and the back. We've now brought in both of the Y axis, Y1 on the left hand side, Y2 on the right hand side. And we're simply gonna take these and drop them over the top of the base frame. There are four holes on the front and four holes on the back, get them to line up. And then we're gonna bring in the M5 20 millimeter bolts and we're just gonna place those in and start to hold this in place. So with the base frame now fixed together with the axis on, we just want to do a quick check for squareness. Now the easiest way to do this is take a tape measure, go from corner to corner, take that measurement, nine to five millimeters, and we'll do the same the opposite way, nine to five. So again, that's a good indication that this is square. Both of your measurements on the diagonals should be exactly the same. If anything is slightly out, release some of the bolts and try and compress it the opposite way that it needs to to get them square and keep taking the measurements and then tighten all the bolts back up but as I say straight out of the box this is square so that's a good sign. So the next step is to fix the spoil board down. This is universal, it can go front to back, so it doesn't really matter which way. The only thing I would say is make sure that the threaded inserts are from the bottom so they don't stick out on the top. Now we're gonna put this in place and we're gonna use eight of the M5 25 millimeter bolts to hold this in position. Line up the slots with the holes in the frame below and start to put them in place. Next, we're installing the two dust guards on the inside of the Y-axis and to hold these in place, we'll be using the M5 12 millimeter bolts. So next, we're about to drop the X-axis gantry on, but we need to make sure both of the Y carriages are in the same position in terms of front to back. Easiest way to do this is to take something like a ruler, drop it into the gap and just tighten it up until obviously it is touching both ends and then do exactly the same on the opposite side. And once it is touching, we know they are now both equal and this should be ready for the x-axis gantry to drop on without any issues. So we've got the x-axis gantry in place. Let's pick it up and drop it onto those carriages. One thing I will point out is there are the wires here for the limit switches on this side. So do be careful when you drop it in on that side not to catch them. So now that's in place, we're going to come in with the M5 12 millimeter bolts and put six in on each side just to secure this in place. So according to the instructions, the next step is to install the Z assembly, but there is a problem. Now I don't know if the microphone will pick this up, 
basically the X carriage is slightly loose. Now this is held in position by four wheels, two on the top and two on the bottom. And ultimately it means something is slightly loose, either in one of the wheels or in two of the wheels. Now what we need to do is correct this before installing the Z assembly. These two large circles down here control the amount of pressure being applied to those wheels. But if we install that first, we won't have access to these later, so we need to sort this up front. Now the problem is, there is no instructions on how to adjust these. So let's take a closer look and I'll try and show you now. Now if we take a closer look at these eccentric nuts, we'll see there are four holes in them. Two have threads in them, two do not. Now the ones with threads have little grub screws in place, so we need to just release those by about a quarter of a turn. And this ultimately frees up this nut so it can rotate. Now what we need to do is tighten this. If you take a closer look, you will see that there are different gaps around this centre hole. And ultimately, the wider the gap, the tighter it will be applying the pressure from the wheel. So what we need to do now is come in with two Allen keys, put them into the holes that do not have the threads, and turn this around until it starts to tighten up on the wheel. Now once you've given that a turn and everything feels nice and tight, it should take any movement out of the carriage. And then what we can simply do is tighten those grub screws back up. And that has now taken the rocking out of that side. I will just double check this other side just to be safe and we'll do that one as well. Just do a final test by turning the knob on the side of the axis just to make sure it moves back and forth. And that should now be good for us to mount the Z assembly. So with that carriage now sorted out and the wobbling taken out of it, we can move on and get the Z assembly installed. Now we're going to be doing this with the M5 12mm bolts. Now there is a little bit of weight in this, so do be careful. You can consider propping it up with some books, but there is, it is just okay to try and hold it in place. Now what I would say is get a bolt in first, put that through the hole, and then align that with the hole that it needs to go into, and start to give it a couple of turns until it bites. Bring in another one, drop that in place, put that into the hole, and again, do the same thing. Give that a couple of turns until it starts to bite. And there we are, that's starting to go in now. And now we can bring in the other two, put these in place as well. And start to do the same. Once you have three in place and it is um, gripping itself, then you can release it and ultimately put the fourth one in without needing to hold it in position. And with all of them in, we will just tighten them up. Now what I would say at this point is don't tighten them all of the way, just make sure there is a slight bit of play in them and I will tell you why in a second. So the Z assembly is in place, it is not secure, there is a little bit of movement in it. But what we need to do at this phase is check for squareness in two different directions. We're going to test the front to back to see if it is leaning one way or the other. And then we're going to test side to side to see if it is leaning one way or the other. So we'll start with front to back, we're just going to bring in the square and put this up against the edge. And what I can see is there is a gap at the bottom. I'll put a better view on screen. But ultimately, it means the top of this Z assembly is leaning forward. So what we need to do is slacken the bolts off at the bottom and bring this out to compensate it. And if I do the same on the side, let's see how that's stacking up. Now we have a gap at the top there. So ultimately this is leaning forward and it's leaning to the right. So we need to compensate that. The left and right is fairly easy. There is a bit of movement in play. So we can just push this up, get it square against that and tighten the bolts up. But in terms of the front to back, we need to pack this out either with some tin foil or some thin space or something like that, just to get it parallel to the bed. So I don't know if this is coincidence or not, but I had two spare washers in the pack of bolts and I've slotted them in behind the Z assembly and it is now made this perpendicular with the bed. I've checked those washers are not needed for anything else. So it is a win all round. I'm gonna take the two bottom bolts out, put these washers in place correctly and then start to tighten it up. And then we'll take the left to right lean out of that and then say just square it up on both axes. So I've just put both the washers in correctly now in line with the bolts themselves. We're going to go in and start to tighten everything up. But as I say, before I pinch the bolts up, we will need to tilt this over to the left hand side in order to take that other slight um, lean out. Obviously when doing anything like this, continually check the squareness every time you adjust the bolts. As I say, because you want to keep it as accurate as possible to save causing you any issues later on. 
Now I don't deceive people in my videos after fitting the Z assembly, I did realize there was still some wobble in the X axis carriage. So I took this back off, tightened those eccentric nuts up just a little bit more and it is now solid and held in place and it can still move. Now obviously I've gone round and double checked and everything is now square so we're good to move on to the next step which is installing the spindle holder. Now there are three different ones that come with this machine. There is a 52, a 65 and a 69 millimetre. I'm installing the 52 millimetre because that's the spindle we're going to be starting with. You will also see there are different sets of holes on the mounting plate here. To begin with we're just going to put these in the lowest one because this is a fairly small spindle. So we're going to drop a couple of the largest bolts in, which are the M5 55mm bolts. And we're just going to start to get this in place and held in position to begin with. Now there is a slight bit of play in this holder as well. So again, what you'll want to do is bring in the square and just check that everything is sitting correctly. That looks pretty good. Now there is a slot in the holder. Tighten the two bolts up first that are on the opposite side to the slot just to pinch this into position. Now the reason we don't tighten the other two bolts up is because we've got to drop the spindle in next. So we've got our spindle, we're going to lower this in place. Now you'll want it around halfway down and then just start to tighten up the other bolts until this clamps in position. It can be a little bit fiddly. It's sometimes easier just to rest the spindle on something. And when it comes to tightening these two last bolts up, tighten one up and then the other so basically give one half a turn then come down give the other one half a turn and it just clamps it up evenly until this is held in position once it starts to grip it you'll see it holds its own weight and then we can just start to pinch all of these bolts up be careful when tightening the clamp inside up you want to obviously give it enough pressure to hold it in position but you don't want to over tighten it that you strip the threads and with that held in place, a quick tip that I always do, bring in something like a pen or a Sharpie, and just put a little black mark in the corner against the spindle and the holder. Now the reason for this is as you start to machine any jobs, if your spindle moves up and down, you can easily tell by the position of that black mark. So it's just a good indication that if it stays in position, obviously there's enough pressure holding it in place. So I've just now spun this round. The next step is to put all the brackets in place for the drag chain. We've got the long bar that sits on the back of the X axis gantry. It should sit this way with the lip facing down and the flat surface on top. And then there are three brackets to hold the drag chain. One that's got a slight step in it. This is sitting on top of on the back of the X axis here. The longest one will sit at the very back of the Y axis underneath the Y1 motor. And the shortest one will sit just under here under the X motor on this side. Now to hold all these in place, it is M58 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go around now and just secure all of these brackets in place. So we now have all of the brackets in place. Now the next stage is to install the drag chain and the wiring. Now the easiest way to do this in my opinion is to place it all in position first before securing anything down with the M4 six millimeter bolts that we'll be using to hold this in position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, put all the drag chain in place, and then we'll go around and start putting in the little bolts to hold all of the drag chain and wiring in position. So there we have it, everything is kind of in place. I mean, it's fairly obvious, but the end with the smallest connectors is the part that goes towards the, the spindle. The other end with all the aviation connectors that obviously goes at the back of the machine. So we're going to go around now with those M4 six millimeter bolts and just secure each end of the bracket, each end of the drag chain into the various brackets that we installed. Now technically that is the assembly finished. The next thing we need to do is go around and connect all of the wires up. Now they are labeled not only with color but also words as well. So Z limit for example goes to the Z limit. These will only go in one way so make sure they are lined up push them in and it should click into position. Similarly, we have the wires for the Z motor, as we can see here. Now with these, there are two different sizes. Again, they will only go in one way. So put them in position and just make sure they click in and are hold in nice and steady. Click it and then do the smaller one as well. And we just want to repeat this process around for every different connection on the machine and just ensure everything is nice and tight and secured. Thank you. 
So all of the limit switches and motors are now connected up. We're just going to connect the spindle. Again, fairly obvious, blue to blue for the negative. Push that in, make sure it is held in secure and red for red on the positive. Also make sure the little guards are covering the terminals as you don't want those exposed. Now the next step is to connect all of these aviation connectors up to the back of the control box. So let's bring that in and start to do that now. Now the control box is upside down for the moment and I just want to stress this point before you start to connect anything up for safety just make sure that the little red switch underneath is on the correct voltage for your country. This is crucial because if you start the machine up and it is on the wrong setting then it could ultimately cause damage to the board. So let's flip this over now and what we can see is on the back we have lots of terminals and connectors and similar to earlier everything is marked up to match these so we're going to go around and just match all the different connectors up to the various aviation connectors in order to finish this off. Now initially the last two connections we need to make are the power cable, obviously make sure this is not connected to the wall and if it is turned off so we'll get that in place and the final connection is the Z probe, this is just another aviation connector so we'll put that in and secure that in place. Now obviously if you are connecting this up to a PC there is the USB cable as well but we're not doing that for the moment. Make sure the little switch at the bottom down here is set to spindle mode. Then we're going to turn this around and make sure everything is working when we turn it on. So the power is now connected to this at the wall and turned on. We're about to turn it on at the back of the machine but there are three quick things we need to do first. The spindle speed over here, turn this down to about halfway just to be safe. The little switch in between, we want to make sure this is on and control that. And the e-stop at the end, just make sure it is released. So I'm going to push this in, you'll hear that click, and then rotate it and it will pop back out. And it just means that that is now released and good to go. So we'll turn the machine on at the back. This should now come to life. First, what we want to do is go into control. We can see in the top right hand corner, it says alarm. So this is sort of in a locked state for the moment. So we're going to click control. And the first thing we're going to do is click on lock and that gets rid of the alarm message in the top right and it now says idle. Now we just want to jog this about a bit, make sure everything works. So we're going to come over and click move. What we can see is there is a step button to control the step size, 0.5, one millimeter or 0.1 millimeter I should say, one millimeter and 10 millimeters. So we're going to try and jog this around a little bit. There we are, it's moving, left, front, and back. And we'll lower and higher the Z. There we are, everything is working as it should. Now in the top right hand corner there is a spindle laser button, this is just to turn the spindle on. Before you do this, make sure your collet is secure and that the bolt is held in position. You don't want to start the spindle up and that be loose, so make sure it is tight. Then we can come over to the spindle laser and press that. And we'll see that that has now fired up. It's pretty quiet because we had the power turned down low. But if we turn this dial up, it speeds up. And you should now be able to hear that in the background. I will turn that back down and we will stop it. So those are the basic tests. Everything is working as it is expected. It is moving around. Now obviously you can continue to use the offline controller or use a PC or laptop as an alternative. So the machine is built and it was super quick to do. It is crazy how easy they are making these machines to assemble these days and with such tight tolerances as well. Now, if you are planning to use this on a PC or laptop, there is a link up in the corner to a video that will talk you through how to install the software and get your machine up and running using a laptop or a PC. So definitely do check that out for the next step. Now, as I said at the start of the video, there is a linear rail kit available for this machine and I will be doing a future video on how to swap that over and get it installed. But obviously now I've got to do the review of this machine and I really am looking forward to it because some nice new features on this machine that we've not seen on other CNC machines before. So keep an eye out for when that is released. Thank you all for watching. If you did find it useful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons. If you want to get involved for one-to-one -one help, giveaways and early access to content, then check out the patron links in the description area below. I will see you all on the next episode.